Hey there, welcome back to my channel. Let's continue with our series. In the previous episode, we have covered how our map and the struct is working, right? So in this episode, we are going to work on conditional statements and a pointer. Right before moving forward to the coding part, let's try to understand what exactly uh, is conditional statement and why exactly it's necessary, right? So I know few of them or maybe almost everyone you know like what conditional statement it is. But from those audience like who exactly is coming as a kind of new to the programming, uh, for those I'm going to explain like a little bit in a different way. So a conditional statement is a kind of way of evaluating your code, right? Just like while we are putting some input to our program. So based on that specific input, uh, we can we need to provide some kind of output, right? So then how we can evaluate that, what exactly the input it is. So that specific evaluation is exactly conditional statement. So with the help of conditional statement, we can evaluate it and we can precisely satisfy the, what exactly the outcome of the program. So this is how it is simply working. So what are the conditional statements are available in Go? There are a few types of conditional statements are available in Go. So some of them are something like this way. This is going to be like if else, if else. And another one is just like switch, switch case. And the last one is that is called select. So select is only applicable while we are working with the Go routine and uh, the channel, right? So these are the conditional statements are available in Go. Let's try to implement these conditional statements. So in this in this case, I'm going to declare a variable, let's say age, right? So age will be let's say 29. Now depends on this age variable, we need to define like what are this specific age person exactly is a senior citizenship, adult or a child, right? So in this case, let's say we are going to write if age is greater than 65 years, then we are going to say like um, fmt dot print Allen senior citizen, right? Senior citizen. Then else, else, else if age is greater than 16, right? Then we are going to say like, uh, this is a kind of like adult, right? Or maybe we can just put it 18 also, or yeah, maybe 17, right? So then else, else, then this is a kind of like child, right? Yeah, this is going to be more meaningful. Now can you see, with the help of like if else conditional statement, we are going to check it like whether this age is provided, is it a kind of senior citizen or adult or a child? Now you can see this conditional statement is perfectly fine with this kind of scenario, just like age. Let's say we need to evaluate greater than or less than or equal something like that way. But there may be some kind of scenario will be available where we know that the variable can have only specific segments. As an example, uh, let's say seat class seat class, right? So seat class can have, let's say, first class, first class, right? Or maybe second class, or maybe or, or maybe business class, or maybe economy, whatever it is, right? The seat class can have something like that way. In that case, we can use the switch cases, right? So let's try to implement that. A switch, and we can provide like seat class, seat class, and let's try to add at least a uh, couple of cases. So first case will be the first First class, then fmt dot print Allen. Here we can say like you will get. Yeah. Right. Then let's say case business business class business class. Then fmt will be similar. Will free drinks. Only print yes. right. Right. Get more. Yes. And the default, let's say. Default will be economy yeah, at the time, like let's say you need to pay. You do? need to. Right, so this is how we are evaluating the switch cases. So, whatever the uh, exact scenario it will come from that specific variable, let's say uh, it did this case, maybe it's first class. We know, like, now this variable only can come this specific two scenarios, or if, if it is coming like something else, then it will fall back to the default, default case, right? So, you can define something like this way. And while you know uh, this kind of static or maybe this kind of specific uh, use cases you need to cover, then we are using switch case, right? Now let's have a try with this application. So go run main, 
now you can see it is saying like adult and you will get pre-links because we have assigned a kind of first class right here right so if you change this to business class then it will fall back to this one and if you put something else right then it will fall back to here right so this is how exactly the conditional statements are working right so this another one is also available that is called select so i'm not going to jump into the select because just to understand the select you need to jump into the uh, go routine and the channels which is it's pretty premature at this moment for, for this specific uh, series so what we are going to do so we are going to cover the select uh, uh, specific uh, conditional statement while we are going to work on the go routine and channels right i don't want to make you confused and i don't want to uh, like you know guide you in a different way at this moment so let's try to complete the basic stuff first then we are going to deep dive a little bit on the complex stuff right so now let's have a look like what are the loops are available in go so in go we have only one loop right so let's try to implement that one so it's called for loop all right the the similar way we are having in another language let's say for um, while do while it, it's everything can be doable here in go by using for right so how we can implement for loop let's have a look to do that we need to declare a variable right here right so let's try to declare a variable this is called my my friends right and this is going to be like uh, let's say her bar my friends this is going to be string string yeah it's a kind of slice of the strings right and how we can add friends right here so let's try to implement a kind of for here for i will be i will be i'll be zero and i less than let's say 10 then i plus plus right then then we can say uh, we are going to create a friend right here let's say my new my new friend will be uh we don't care about the name we are we are we are only caring about the index so how we can assign some kind of like uh name along with the index so with the help of helper function it can be doable right so let's try to use that helper function that is called fmt as printf right so which is which is exactly used for uh formatting the string right so what string we are going to format let's say let's provide it let's say friend space let's say and here we are going to provide the index right so friend one let's say so in that case let's provide i here right so my new friend is created right there let's try to add this new friend to my my slice so in that case my friends are going to be append and here my friends right then provide the new my new friends my new friend right so now you can see like we are we are assigning all these friends to my this slice and let's try to put it out here um this is going to be fmt.println and here my friends cool let's let's try to spin the application now now can you see like we are we are having this to uh, the output from our previous uh, previous example but can you see like friends 0 1 2 3 till 9 we have added right so we have the 10 specific uh, items we have added just to using this problem right but how we can get it out like in you know, all these things we need to display right so we don't want like this specific line uh here this is fine like this is displaying inside the array but we don't want that we want that like one friend can display on one single line so how we can do that so with the help of for loop again we can do that so let's going to remove this one how we can do that so let's try to implement another type of a for loop in order to iterate through all the indexes all the values from our our slice right so in that case let's say for right so first value will be like our key and value right and in that in that case you can say this is not going to be like key this is going to be index you can say right uh, whatever the name you can put that's it's gonna work right and after that we need to provide a kind of range range of what range of exactly my slice right so in that case my friends so now now let's try to print it out all this stuff right so what we can do fmt dot dot uh, print ln let's say print ln where i'm i'm gonna put like index index and value now let's try to spin the server right so can you see now now it is coming correctly right so uh this print zero one two three till nine right this is how exactly it's gonna work now this is the way we can just iterate through all the collections but what if if we need to run certain uh, infinite loop or maybe that specific loop is going to be over while 
we're having certain uh, certain condition. Let's say in this case, uh, I'm going to declare something like uh, is let's say is is over. Let's say is over going to be zero. Let's say right. And in that case, we are going to run a kind of loop here for right for if let's say is over is greater than 99, then it will be returned from here. Right. Then we can say is over will be plus plus. So now you can see like we need to execute certain things and where but we just want to come out from that specific loop once that condition is over here right so in that case we can do something like this way so let's have right here and we're going to run this application can you see now it is coming from here right but but we we, we don't know like whether it is over or not so let's try to put something like some log log uh, maybe fmt dot println like over is over then let's say here we're going to put a kind of like it's really over really it's really over now right can you see now now it is it is a spinning from here like how uh, we we are working with like you know uh, do while or similar kind of loop and when it's reaching to that the specific things like it is saying like it's really over it's exited from here another way if you wish to run it infinitely uh, because in go uh, this is certainly uh, many cases we are running the infinite loop also while we are listening to something some uh, some specific socket or something like that way then we are simply putting like this way here right so let's say I am listening I'm listening till server live right so if you're going to run this application right so it is not going to be over at all right it will going to listen for infinite loop right so let's try to exit this application at this moment and this is how we are implementing the loop as well as perfect so now it's time to move forward to the pointer part right so how the pointer things gonna work that is we will check it out right so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna remove all these things from here right let's try to remove it what is exactly the pointer a pointer is a kind of variable that holds memory address right and I know uh, a lot of people say it's pointer concept is very complicated but in my opinion it's it's not exactly pointer is self-explanatory right so you are pointing to something right you said like this is not with me this is with someone else all right you are just pointing pointer are used in indirectly uh, to wrapper a variable often used for a more efficient of memory management that means like you, know, you have already declared something you have already stored something in the memory all right you no need to again to create and again to occupy that specific memory so in that case this pointer is gonna work right as an example let's say uh, j all right j has something right j has a kind of like you know maybe a kind of laptop right then another person is coming like you know uh, there's a kind of guest guest is coming to to jay's home he gonna say like hey jay do you have a laptop then guest need to use like you know rather than buy a kind of new laptop in the jay's home so he can directly use the jay's laptop right so how he can use it he can he can say hey jay can you please give your laptop then jay gonna say yeah i have the laptop so jay is potentially like you know guest is point pointing to jay to get the laptop so in, in this case you can say like you know, guess is the variable or i guess is the pointer right which is pointing to jay to get the variable get the value from the from j this is going to be like a laptop you have a kind of uh, guests in your home and he need a kind of laptop so he need to refer to you he need to point to point to you something right rather than he is going to market and buy a laptop to use in jay's home right when while he will be leaving jay's home then he need to leave the laptop right there right so this is going to be too complicated but rather than you can think of it like jay is a kind of variable right and uh, there is a kind of variable it is holding a value that is called laptop and new uh, new variable is coming to the picture let's say guest is coming to Jay's home and the guest says I need that laptop then he cannot directly access that laptop rather than occupy a new memory he gonna say like hey Jay please can I borrow your laptop his guest is like an appointing to Jay to get the laptop so let's try to implement these things like in real life let's say I'm gonna say like you no know, uh, maybe Jay 
Jay has a kind of like, you know, laptop, let's say. Laptop, all right? Then, then let's say FMT. I'm often using log, so that's why actually by, you know, uh, by habit it's always coming as a kind of log, print LN or something like that way. But uh, let's try to use the uh, FMT. And I'm gonna say like uh, print LN J. If you're gonna run this one, then you're supposed to see like only laptop, right? So it says laptop, right? But now, now I'm going to declare another variable just for pointer, all right? Let's say par guest. Guest is a kind of pointer, and what exactly the pointer type? It will be a kind of string. As I said in the previous tutorial, like pointer can be anything, any type. It's just like you know, it, it may be string, it may be array, it may be basic type, or it may be composite type as well. So in this case, we need a kind of string, right? So now, if you're going to print it out like a and print ln, say guest. And if you if you run the application, then you're supposed to see nil, right? Nil, right? Because this right now, this specific uh, guest exactly it is not pointing to anything, right? So what we can do now, we are saying like guest, hey guest, can you please use uh, this laptop? Then how we can assign it, right? So let's go here, and we can say like uh, guest, guest, used guest will be use use of the address of J. Yeah. So now if you're going to run this stuff, you know, the guest will be having the access of the laptop. So what exactly this M person symbol is saying? Like M person symbol, it is like, you know, saying please use that specific reference, like, you know, to uh, gain the address of the J. While we are declaring a variable, right, then it is holding a memory, uh, memory address, right? So some kind of uh, address. So as an example, we are just defining some numbers, right? So that specific address exactly and uh, this variable is, is occupying, right? So while we are accessing that uh, specific variable address, right, by something like this way, right? So it is simply saying like, hey, guest, please use like this memory address, right? So at least you can get the laptop there, right? So now if you're going to run the application, something like this way, right? Now you can see it is gaining this specific memory address, right? So uh, you can check it out like how we can check this memory address right here. Let's say if you if you run this one here, right, by this println.j address, then you can see right now. Now you can see both the address are, are, are pretty much same. Can you see? So we are having this j memory address here and here we have the guest and guest memory address here. So in that case, let's try to put a kind of star right here to see right here in the second line here the it's it said laptop can you see laptop so this is how exactly it's going to work this is not too, too complicated concept right so we have a kind of variable that is called j and j variable is holding up some kind of memory address as an example let's try to copy this memory address here so this is going to be a precise number right this is the memory address and we are declaring a kind of pointer here at this moment and that pointer will be initially having nil right this is a kind of it doesn't have a memory address but here what we are saying like this pointer is going to assign the same memory address of j variable so that means while we are our guest is need to access it all right then guest will be pointing to that specific variable value only and how we can get the value by using a star right so this is how the whole uh, pointer concept is gonna work right so in the next episode what we are going to do we are going to work on our functions and the receiver function right so these are the most essential part where we'll be writing some kind of excel code for our our application all right then i'm gonna take a break right here then see you in the next episode bye bye